some time ago, earlier this year, I made an attempt to provide RBC intake manifolds. Now, even when I went to go do this, I knew it was a fucking long shot because, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's what can you do to enhance this thing to make it worthwhile? I it, Inherently, if I'm going to charge more money for a product, uh, I have to be able to make it, you know, I have to be able to justify the increase in cost. So with that being said, I can understand why some people kind of flame the fucking video. But uh, one of the other reasons why people flamed the video so hard was saying, oh, it's a junk ass piece of shit manifold. It's not going to work without uh, without getting in and cutting it up. I'm like, well, fine, bet. That's fine. I'll, I'll keep it. Yeah, I'm going to use it. And uh, thinking about it again, I was like, yeah, well, yeah, I'll port it. It's not that big a deal. So I finally bought the uh, long chain carbides that I've been looking at forever. And uh, I'm going to cut it open and I'm going to fucking port it. But besides that fact, mentioning this when I threw it up on Instagram or social media and whatnot, uh, my old tuner actually commented on the post. He said, it's definitely worth the buy. They work the same. Like, uh, in reference to the porting or as is? He goes, as they are. He goes, I did a comparison before between the manifolds. He goes, I don't, I don't have the graph on hand, but the numbers were the same. So... For everybody that was talking mad shit about how it was a junk manifold and, and, and all that, well, uh, fuck you. <laughs> so if you want to go and buy it, of course it's not a secret. If you keep your eyes in the market, you'll be able to find it on your own, and you'll and you'll be able to get it for a very very cost effectiveness, right? A very cost effective price. Now, what I can bring to the table is, of course, I'm going to do the port work. I'm going to make it better. Now. Uh, my only thing, the only reason why I, I didn't do this before and why I hesitated until now to do it is because I don't have welding equipment. And even buying the cheap Harbor Freight welder and then like getting a good stable hand to do good welds, it's that's a big investment. It's a big investment to make in, in something that I am not 100% sure to make return money on right now. Now, uh, eventually, I, I want to be able to weld everything anyway. Eventually, I want to get to that point. But right now, it's not a priority. Same thing when people ask me about transmissions all the time. It's not a priority. So I take my time getting these things. I Every time I do something new, I do it a whole bunch. Normalize the process. So that way I, I understand everything it's going to take to make what I'm trying to do. Understand the labor hours. Work out the pricing kinks. And then once it's solid, once it's something I can do without thinking about, then I start looking for something else. All throughout this past month, I've been focusing on heads. And while I may still have a couple of tweaks to make, I still think I, and feel that I have most of the system down where um, the prices are going to adjust, but not more than a couple hundred dollars or a or hundred dollars or so here or there, depending on what you're buying. Now, the bigger built heads are going to get a couple hundred dollars increase, but for the, maybe the base model heads are going to be like a 50 to 60 dollar increase that I haven't decided yet. That's why I say for you guys, it's always a good idea to jump on something when I'm providing it new because the initial price is always going to be cheaper than what it goes up to. I always like to price things on the low side so that way I can go up. It's, you know, I don't, I'm not going to price something at $600 and then later on just be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to sell it for $400 instead. Nah, I'd rather start at $400 and move my way to $6. So when it comes to supporting the intake manifold, I don't know exactly how much time this is going to take. So my initial say, saying right now is I'm going to offer it for $450. Shit. Now, um, that's not a huge amount of profit for the labor that goes into it. I, I'm, I'm under the suspicion that this is going to be several hours of labor. If it takes me more than three hours to do this, then prices are going to go up. Um, so right now what I'm going to do, and the reason why I'm, I'm deciding to experiment with this is because I have a guy that I work with who welds. And I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut the intake manifold. I'm going to do the uh, the, the porting. And I'm going to bring it to him to do and to reweld it back on. And um, if this goes according to plan, if everything goes smoothly, guys, this is something that I can mass produce. They come cheap enough where I can buy one every time I get paid and not notice the uh, the money that's going to come away. Now, of course, I'm not going to go crazy and just stock up on a whole bunch, but um, you know. I'm, I'll be able to at least have two or three on hand because if it takes as much labor as I think it's going to take, then uh, then that also is going to uh, play into readiness. Like if I can have one or two already in stock, then that means I don't have to order it, do the work, and then send it out because that's what you know the labor in between time is what takes eventually week a week or weeks in the in the processing work, right? Versus me already having one ready to go 
also why I thought to use this as an incentive to sell is that I could do like discounts, uh, like if you buy a package deal, like if you're buying a head for me and the intake manifold, then I can work out the price where it's better for your pockets, right? Incentivize you to also buy a head because that's better for me. So um, uh, right now also too, uh, you know, the RBC intake manifold, it comes for the, the coolant port that would be matched up on the K24 or I think the, the RBC head, which is the later generation K20 head, right? Uh, the eighth, it was an eighth gen, eighth gen SI. So also that would be something I could add as an increase is cutting that coolant piece off if you want to use it for an earlier uh, earlier K20 head. So um, there are different ways to, to do this. And one is, uh, you know, just straight the straight port work as is or ported and cut for a K20 head. So uh, I, I like this shit, man. This is, I, like, I like making, like I said, I like to make use of everything. I don't like th things to go to waste. Now, uh, I think that if you're buying a stock intake manifold, a stock RBC intake manifold for $200 online or locally or whatever, and, or you're paying $250 for one that's cut, I'm offering currently for $450 a ported uh, intake manifold with a that comes naturally with a 70 millimeter throttle body port. So look out for that in the near future. I gotta wait for the car beads to come in. I would imagine that middle of next week, I'll probably see those. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to go ahead and cut open the manifold. So the one I have on hand right now, I'm gonna bring it to work with me tomorrow after I punch out for my end of my day. Uh, we'll go ahead and cut the lid off of it just so I can take a peek at it and see uh, if the, the casting is a disaster inside. And again, guys, I know that a lot of people like to roast my original my original talk about that because they're saying that it's junk on the inside. There's casting flash everywhere. Well, I don't know if you've taken a look inside a stock head, but if you look inside the runners of your head, there's a lot of casting flash up in that motherfucker too. And uh, that's something I might get back to as well. Now, I did say after my porting experience, the hand porting, that I don't think that it's worth the amount of labor that I could possibly charge for, for hand porting and it wouldn't be consistent. So I'm, I don't think I'll ever do I mean, that, that port, that, head that I ported by hand, I might eventually use that one day, who knows. But um, I don't think I'm gonna offer hand porting, but what I might do is, now that I'm gonna have the long shank carbides, I might just do like a super light removal of the casting flash in the head, so somewhat smoothed out for the runners, you know? That's just a thought, I don't know. But it's, you know, I'm always, like I said, I'm always thinking of ways to provide things for you guys. And also, to finish this up, speaking about heads or whatnot, uh, I know that um, engine blocks are uh, expensive for people. And another thing is too, I do the payment plans, but because of the nature of the beast of being that I have to pay for parts up front, I the, the deposit for an engine block is a lot larger than the deposit for something I already have. So if you want a deposit for an engine block, I need the, the cost of the pistons and rods up front. Or if you're doing stock rods, then I need the cost of the pistons up front, or pistons, and, pistons rods, and bearings. So I need the rotating assembly, which inevitably leads to around $500 for a deposit. Now, on the plus side, if you want to do a head, let's say if you want a VTEC killer head and you want a deposit for that, I already have everything I need on hand for a VTEC killer head except the valve seals. So $100 will get you uh, in the door for a deposit for something like that. So guys, if you, want, uh, if you want to do a head and you want to do a super budget head, then I do have K24 base and K20 base VTEC killer head options. I have two sets of cams left on hand right now. If you want a complete drop and ready head, $560 for either head, K20 or K24. Although the price will be going up in the near future for the K20 once I get to sit down in peace and think about it a little bit. Although I do have a soft estimate of what I'm gonna use because of the fact that the extra meat on the K20 head does increase compression by 0.5. A 0.5 compression jump is noticeable and hard to ignore. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll compensate for that by up in the price a little bit, it makes sense. So if you guys out there want a, a VTEC killer head, $100 down and it's 560 total. Although it's $100 down, $50 a week at minimum or $200 a month. If you miss a month's worth of payments, then you lose your investment. Whatever you have paid into it is gone, it's mine, there is no refund and I'm gonna relist that head for sale or whatever. It, you know, I doing no interest financing, you don't have to make payments until after your thing is ready to ship. But if you're gonna do this and I'm, we're gonna make this agreement, I can't continue to stack parts around my fucking house for people who are 
gonna make payments and then they're gonna get shaky. I've had a guy that's gone the better part of a year now with uh, not making any payments at all. I even offered a trade offer and, and he picked the trade and still didn't come through. And I have another guy that, uh, that I built a single cam for who is now MIA for like two and a half, three weeks. So I can't continue to offer people to do um, like a layaway type deal with no interest and um, <clears throat> and have just parts start to stack up all over my house. My house isn't very big, guys. So uh, again, thanks for watching. As always, social media links in the description down below. And peace.